Howdy folks, Matty with Gulf Coast Fit and I'm aboard Albatross ready to do a micro session um, with some cluster training. I'm going to be using bands for this cluster training and I talked a little bit about cluster training in my intro video. Talked about doing it with barbells, dumbbells, bands, kettlebells and uh, since I'm on a boat I'm going to use bands because I don't really take weights onto the boat but it's a good opportunity to uh, put my bands to good use and uh, stay productive anywhere and everywhere. And check out this boat that's launching right now. Now that is a big fancy boat. That's pretty cool, but uh, that's a lot. I think I would uh, definitely prefer, I prefer albatross. That's loud, it's kind of early wake up the neighbors uh, all right so we're doing some cluster training with bands I'm gonna start off with deadlifts and I'm not sure how this will go but remember cluster training means that you're taking a short rest pause break mid set that way you can extend your set it's work capacity training uh, a form of work capacity training to increase your work capacity uh, the nature of bands is such that uh, it's very concentric based. The band stretches and intensifies and then on the eccentric phase the band loosens and so it's very concentric centric. Uh, since there is not a great eccentric phase uh, you don't really get the, uh, the you don't get much of a negative. So what's great about bands is they don't make you really very sore. So I can focus on force production pushing against the band or pulling against the band depending on what exercise I'm doing and you know that's what's great about bands also is not only do you not get sore as sore because of the minimal eccentric phase which the eccentric phase where your muscles are lengthening that's where you get those micro tears that's where you get sore um, this focuses more on force production on the positive phase which is really great for athletes um, I'm, I don't consider myself much of an athlete I dabble a little bit but I want to be able to perform like an athlete at all times and I chose to do this workout because I don't want to be very sore tomorrow I've got paddling practice and um, that is always my priority paddling performance paddling with the team and uh, making sure I don't set myself back when I'm training and that's kind of the point of training is to complement what it is your intention is why are you what's your why behind what you know why you're training and plan accordingly so let's get right into this cluster set I'm gonna make sure I don't drop you in the water it's probably gonna happen sometime All right, look at this beautiful morning oh yeah albatross is a wonderful place to work out now once again you don't have to be on a boat to do this but I suppose the next best thing would be watching me do it on a boat, right? I'm just kidding. But I am stoked to do this aboard Albatross. All right, so let's make sure I got you set up to where you can see what's going on without turning you off. I'm pretty good at turning the camera off accidentally. I surround you by a, with a towel in case you slip out of the tripod because that tends to happen. All right, I think my plan of attack will be to use the big band, my big blue band. I got my bands here. Since I'm doing deadlifts, that's about as strong as a, of an exercise as it gets. So I'm going with the big band. Remember with cluster sets, you keep a constant resistance. It's not a drop set, so I'm not gonna move down in weight. And with bands, it's more appropriate to do medium to high volume, even for something like deadlifts that would conventionally be seen as a low volume, high intensity exercise. Uh, this will end up being high intensity. I'm gonna try to keep it to just one recovery breath between each cluster. And maybe I'll shoot for, I might go anywhere from three to eight reps at a time for each, for each cluster. I don't know, we'll see, it's all performance based, but I'll keep you filled in along the way. And I'm gonna make sure I keep it down, to, actually I'll keep it to two breaths, because remember with cluster training, you've got 10 to 15 seconds. So I'll stick with two breaths and that'll probably be like eight seconds. All right. I imagine I'll get four or five clusters in. The clusters are not constant in reps. Um, just so you know, here we go. 
Since this band is so big, I'm gonna make this a narrow stance deadlift, feet close together. So I've got as much band to work with as possible. Face sideways so you can see my deadlift hip hinge and see how it feels. Oh yeah. Oh, that's not easy. To get the most out of this band, I'm kind of doing a stiff leg deadlift. But I dig that. Ooh, that wasn't easy. Now, I kept the turnover pretty fast for a deadlift because I'm giving myself a rest pause so I don't want to rest in between each rep. And that's my break. Cluster number two. Hammies and glutes all day. Stop there at eight. Give himself three breaths. Shoot for six to eight now. Keep going, that was three clusters. I'm thinking maybe five, and I'll explain why. One more breath, or no more than 15 seconds. Feeling that. I'm gonna go one more. I'm gonna try to keep these crisp and explosive. I'm resting too long, but you can't do that. I really feel that and my hamstrings and glutes. Now, like I said, that turned into more of a stiff leg deadlift. I'm still all about the hip hinge, not so much knee flexion. And that's so that I could keep tension in the band. I don't want to go all the way down to where the band is slack. And also um, to recruit my hamstrings and glutes posterior more effectively. So right there, I just did five clusters. I think if I kept track right, 10, then four sets of eight, so that's 32, 42 reps. 42 very explosive deadlifts, and you know what? This band, holy cow. This band, I don't know what it's rated at, but at the top, at the lockout, definitely felt on par with maybe a, maybe a 225 deadlift, locking out 225 pounds as far as max tension and force at the peak, at the, at the hip extension. I like that, and I went with five clusters of medium volume there because really I cut it when I felt like I was becoming less explosive. Remember, bands aren't like dumbbells or barbells to where you can go a lot heavier um, and do fewer reps. 
And so I'm really not gonna, and if I wanted to go to failure with the bands, then I would end up doing way too many reps. I would have technical breakdown with my form, making bands performance-based. Since as far as band training goes, it is a very performance-based um, training modality, resistance modality. But for me doing 10, and then adhering to the 15 or less seconds of rest pause to make these clusters legit, and then four clusters of eight, that's where I felt like my performance was optimal. In the seventh and eighth rep, I kind of felt like I was starting to trail off a little bit. And like I said, I don't want to do reps into oblivion. Uh, more is not better, better is better. There are some circumstances where you might do clusters to failure, depending on what you're doing. Uh, or what exercise or what your intentions are, but with these deadlifts, I've always got a performance-based goal with deadlifts. So uh, mechanics, keep those in place, keep my breath steady, keep my fast twitch muscle fibers feeling like they're firing on all cylinders, feeling neurally charged after that. Um, so I think next up, I'm gonna move on to an upper body uh, set of cluster training with probably some upper, since I just did a lower body pulling exercise, really full body, but that was pulling deadlift is pulling. Uh, I'm going to move on to uh, upper body pushing. I'm not sure if I'm going to do vertical or horizontal pushing. I'm going to decide right now while I drink some coffee, catch my breath a little more, and I think I'll cut this video and turn this into a series. See you in a sec.